Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bayside Chapel. Hey, I want to take a minute and thank you for joining us online this morning. I know that it's going to feel a little bit different as you're there gathered with friends or family. Maybe you're there by yourself. And I want to encourage you that over the next few weeks, we might have to meet like this for a little bit. But God's got this. Just a few minutes, we're going to join with other churches all over the globe. We're going to worship together and then we'll come back and have a message that the Lord's led on my heart about this coronavirus. Let me encourage you that if you're joining us for the very first time, or whether you're a seasoned churchgoer, it doesn't matter. Over the next few minutes while we worship the Lord together, you're in a room with just you and Him. And I want you to feel comfortable with that. Then as His Word is open for us this morning, we pray that it touches every single one of our hearts. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to come into your presence. Father, I pray for every single person that's joining with us right now. God, that you would just bring peace into their lives. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we gather together virtually, Lord, that you would touch the hearts and the lives of every single person. Father, we pray that as we worship you this morning, it would honor you and it would bless you. And that God, as we would look at your word together in just a few minutes, it would change the way we see things. Lord, thank you for the opportunity we've got to gather this way. Bless our time together, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get ready to worship with churches all over the world. We serve an amazing God and we triumph in Him.
darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love Ain't no longer has a place to hide I am not a captive to the light I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Come on and sing it Yeah
chance when I stand in your love, my feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love.
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord, we're grateful. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord I've tasted and seen I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence your presence Lord you're welcome here Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flow the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory Your goodness, let 
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence is here everywhere. Lord. Us to worship together. Thank you for allowing us to. Uh, meet virtually and Lord we just pray right now for all the needs Father I pray for Rick that you would just touch his back Lord that you continue to heal his body even though the surgery has been postponed Father I pray for Tanya that you administer to her and touch her Lord I pray for all the other needs that are represented God I pray that you would minister to them whether they're physical or financial whether they're emotional or spiritual. God, I'm reminded of Stephen Lewis who needs a touch in his physical body. For Carrie, whose daughter needs a, a help with her pregnancy, Lord. God, all of these other requests, Lord, we pray that you administer to them. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I just want to, again, thank you for being here this morning. I want to say thank you for uh, this different way of having service together. Uh, listen, if you're watching by Facebook or by YouTube, uh, you can go to our website, which is BaysideChapelDepotBay.com. Click the uh, online giving button and you'll be able to uh, give that way. Uh, also, our host will be putting up the number uh, so that you can text to give if you want. Uh, if you want, you can still send a check in to P.O. Box 116. I don't know, some of you might be thinking, oh, here he goes, the preacher's asking for money. But the reality is, is even though we can't meet personally, we still have bills that need to get paid. So thank you for your faithfulness to the house of the Lord. Uh, if you're joining us with the uh, BaysideChapel.Online.Church. Now would be a great time to go there if you're not there already. And you can join this service. The nice thing about it, we will have moderators. Uh, I've asked my wife Kim to host for us. And you'll be inter able to interact with each other. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning, I want to speak to you about a message the Lord laid on my heart. Title of the message this morning is called the coronavirus. What's all the fuss? Just a few minutes, we'll be looking at Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. And let me just tell you this, that I know that there's a lot of stuff going on right now. I know that some of you are, are hunkered in because you're in the high risk category and you don't want to take a chance of getting sicker. And I commend you for that. I've had people call this week and say, well, hey, can't we just show up at church and, and, you know, we'll just be some of the people that are there. And although I would have loved that, the reality is, is after listening to the mayor or the governor's update on Friday night, uh, chances are she's going to issue a stay in the house order come Monday. And so we want to do everything we can to keep you safe. I came up with a summary thought that simply says this. This coronavirus has caused many to question if God is not happy with us or with this generation or to be afraid that God won't help us in this crisis. Church, can I just tell you that those are the farthest things from the truth. As a matter of fact, in the next few minutes, as we take a look at scripture, we're going to understand that not only does God love you, but he loves you more than you and I can even imagine. As always, I, I look for a, a cute story online about fear and, and just to kind of break the ice a little bit. Listen to what I found. There was a plane full of retirees and they were heading for Florida. Suddenly, they were gripped with fear when the pilot came on and he announced that two of our engines have now gone out. They've caught on fire and we're flying through heavy fog with near, without any invisibility, visibility at all. Passengers were numb with fear except for one who happened to be a semi-retired minister. He said, now folks, keep calm, keep calm. Let's bow our heads and pray. 
Immediately, the whole group on the plane bowed their heads, except for one guy near the back of the plane. And when the minister asked him, he said, sir, why won't you bow your head? He says, I don't know how to pray. Another pastor just spoke up out of fear and said, listen, just do something religious. The man thought for a second, they took his ball cap off and he began to pass it up and down the aisles. Listen, I know that some people think that that's all the church is about. And I know just a minute ago, I made an appeal to you for money because the church still does have bills to pay. But I want you to know we're doing everything we can at Bayside Chapel to keep it in contact with everybody. We're doing everything we can. Uh, we've got the leadership making phone calls, making sure that people are not falling through the cracks. For those of you that have sent private messages to me about Kim and her health, uh, we're doing okay. Uh, we're just trying to keep her contained because she's in that, that high risk category. As a matter of fact, as I was putting this message together, I was watching the numbers update, update and update. I was prepared to give facts, but every hour they seem to be getting worse and worse. As a matter of fact, in our own state of Oregon, the governor initially said that kids were going to be out of school until the 1st of April. And now they're out of school till the 28th of April. And I know if I was a kid, I'd be like, yeah. And as a parent, I'd be like, oh. As a matter of fact, a pastor friend of mine said, man, our kids aren't very happy because they're not going to be in school. And I said, yeah, my kid's not very happy. He's not going to be in school anymore, but he's 27. So the reality is, is this virus is spreading. It's spreading across the globe. It's spreading across the country. But I want you to know that this morning, there's hope. And that you and I as Christians shouldn't buy into this panic atmosphere. Because we have a refuge. We have a protector. We have a helper. And yes, let me tell you that the Bible promises victory. Amen? You see, the first century Christians often fought diligently for physical and spiritual survival. There were such hardships that were caused them to, to wonder if this newfound faith would even make it. As a matter of fact, Paul in Romans chapter 8 assured them that though they might face trials, God would bring them through victoriously. So this morning, as we take a look at our text, let me remind you that that same promise is good for us today. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 35, and then we'll jump down 37 through 39. It says, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will we not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Verse 34 says, Who is he that condemns Christ Jesus who died? More than that, who is raised to life, who is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. And I love what verse 37 says. Look at that. It says, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to come in your presence. Lord, I pray over the next few minutes as we prayed so many times before that none of us would leave this place the same way that we walked in. And God, that even though we're meeting virtually, God, your Holy Spirit would speak to every single one of our hearts. Lord, if there's anything inside us that doesn't line up with your word, your character, your nature, 
that you would bring it to the forefront of our minds so that we could repent and we could make it right. Father, I pray for our churches that are spread out all over this Lincoln County. Speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> you know, this morning I wanted to talk to you about four things that we can do or four things that we have to remember during a crisis. Number one, we have to remember that we have the ultimate power. Look at what it says in verse 31 again. It says, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? See, the early Christians versus the Roman Empire, there were crucial moments in Paul's life. Think about it for a minute. In Lystra, where Paul was stoned by the townspeople, he was left for dead. Paul had just been preaching the gospel. He had healed the cripple. How could God let this happen? Some might ask, is the devil stronger than God? And church, when you and I feel defeated, when we're wrong because we've done something right, just like Paul did, he assured the Roman Christians of that day that no power is greater than God Almighty. So I say again, if God be for us, who can be against us? And the only logical answer is no one. You see, the reality is with us and our problems, at times we feel like we're fighting a battle that's too big for us to win. It's too big. The enemy's too large to be defeated. We fight this battle with our kids and our marriages at our workplaces. And yet throughout history, we've seen that there have been temporary victories of darkness, communism, fascism, war, immorality, persecution. But God has always brought the wicked down. And the church has always come out victorious. Like Moses told the Israelites, God brought us out of Egypt to bring us into and to give us the land that he promised as an oath to our ancestors. God didn't save you to let you falter and flounder. He saved you to bring you to heaven victoriously. If God is for you, who can be against you? The second point I want to make this morning is simply this. We have an unlimited supply of power. Verse 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? You know, there's a lot of talk in the news right now about supply lines. I remember when I got home from camp last Sunday in the middle of the night, I woke up and I said to Kim, I said, how many rolls of toilet paper do we have? And she said, oh, we have two. So I began to look for toilet paper on Monday and I couldn't find it. She said, don't worry, Thriftway's got a bunch. I said, okay, we went to Thriftway and they were out of toilet paper. Thank heavens our son sent my wife a text and he says, hey, I found a case of toilet paper in the back and she was like, hold this too, we'll be right there. I have people all the time as we're talking about this thought about supply lines. People all the time say, oh, pastor, would you pray for me? The devil's after me. He's got me whipped. He's got me down. Oh, he's trying to attack my body. Oh, this, oh, that. I just don't know if I'm going to make it. And I just want to grab him. And I want to say, come on. How big is your God? Is your God There's just this, this thing, this deity that you see on Sundays and you leave him here? Well, church, not for me. See, my, my Bible says that God spoke and everything we see came into existence. My Bible says that God took and he put the very breath of life into me. You see, your perception of God is what really matters. Because if you serve a small God, he's going to ask you for a little bit. And he's not going to produce much. 
But church, if you serve a great big God, he's going to ask you for a lot of stuff. But he says all of heaven's resources are there for you. See, God will provide. Throughout the Old Testament, we see that when people lacked resources, but they kept their faith in God, they saw God come through. God, who's Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. I'm reminded of the prophet's widow who, you remember a few weeks ago, we talked about her. She owed a great debt, yet she saw God provide. Israel, when invaded by powerful armies, trusted God and he saved them. The men who stood for God in the fire were saved. In verse 32, Paul reminds us of this. He said, he didn't spare his own son, but he gave him up for us. In other words, he gave the very best he had. James chapter 5, verse 16. Many of you might know it through the King James Version. It says the effectual fervent prayer. But I love the way the Living Bible puts it, that paraphrase. It says the earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and wonderful results. So not only do we have the ultimate power, not only do we have unlimited supply of power, the third thing I want to assure you this morning is that we have unending forgiveness. Look at what verse 33 and 34 says. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died? More than that, who is raised to life is at the right hand of the Father and is also interceding for us. See, I'm reminded of a story of a woman who went to church to be saved. The speaker that night quoted Isaiah 53, chapter 6, and he asked her to simply take God at his word and depend on Jesus for her salvation. She went home, she was rejoicing. But the next morning, she came downstairs with tears in her eyes. Her little boy who had been with him at the church asked, What's the matter, Mama? She said, You know, last night, I felt saved. But now I don't. And he says, Mama, get your Bible. Turn to that verse in Isaiah 53, verse 6. And so she did. And the little boy looked at his mom and he said, Mom, he said, Mama, is that verse still there? And she said, yes, it is. And listen to what the little boy said. He says, well, Mama, if the verse is still there and you laid your sins on Jesus last night, then your sins are still there too. You see, she quit depending on her feelings. And started depending on the word of God. Man, out of the mouths of babes. Amen. And I understand we all have hard times. Sometimes we even have hard times in our own personal walk. Times of dryness. Times where it just doesn't feel right. Times where we feel like we're out of touch. We go through things. Whether it's sickness or job separation. Whether it's marital situations or situations with our kids or our parents. We might have a catastrophe hit or this virus comes and we think, oh man, God's abandoned us. Church, can I tell you that that is not true? Look at Paul. Paul went through many terrible events. He was beaten, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked, he was jailed, he was betrayed, he was persecuted, and he still had total faith in God. I imagine right now, one of the things about being at home for church is Betty probably still in her overcoat. 
And I, I don't know, but I'm guessing that that overcoat's probably... Well, let's just say that maybe that could get us stoned in some places. I had to say that because Benny's not here to rebuff me. But we've got to understand that just like Paul went through those trade chart, those trials, you and I will go through trials, but we will get through them. And finally, the fourth, fourth point I want to make this morning is we have an unwavering love. Amen. Look at what verse 35, 37 through 39 say. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons Neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Church, can I tell you that you and I have to understand that we live in a world that's plagued with cruel events, poor self images. Most of the time seems lopsided. It's got a poor understanding of scripture, uh, an, un, an untrue understanding of who God is. And so you and I have to hang in there. and We have to not let those things influence us. Look at this quote. It says, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Church, that's love. Nothing can separate us. From the love of God. See in verses 38 and 39. Paul tries to. If you will encompass. All the things we could think of. Height. Nor death. Life or death. Angels or demons. Nothing in the present, nothing in the future, nothing of any powers. He was trying to draw the picture that all of this stuff can't separate us from the love of God. As a matter of fact, out of all of this, I think his crowning statement, if you will, is what it says there in verse 37. It says, no, in all these things... We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Church, can I tell you that the Greek there actually says conquerors of all. So it would read like this. Know that in all these things we are conquerors of all through Christ Jesus. Think about that. That addiction has you down, we're conquerors of all. That person has you angry, we're conquerors of all. This virus has you scared, we're conquerors of all. All the hype, all the media. Listen, if you want to take a little bit of a mental break, shut off the TV. Well, Pastor, I listen to Fox. Yeah, me too, but sometimes you just need to shut off the TV. Sometimes you just need to get into the Word, get into His his presence and say, God, I need more of you because when we put more of him in us, we're allowed to be able to share more of him with others. Amen. Never forget God's on your side. He's planning all things so that eternally you will make it. But sometimes we have to develop that trust through a veil of tears. Because it's that trust that will equip us to reign with him forever. 
So as we wrap this up, let me simply ask you this. How's your heart? What's your fear level like? Are you thinking that God's walked out on this situation and I don't know what it's going to look like? Can I tell you to have both? Some of you might be joining us for the very first time. You don't have a church home, but right now the internet's blasted with churches and you just happen to run across us. It's not by accident. God wants you to know that he loves you and he's got a plan for you. Maybe you're in church once or twice a month. God wants you to know that he loves you more than you could ever imagine. Maybe you're in church faithfully every time the doors are open. But your heart's far from him. Let me tell you that God loves you. And he wants the very best for you. In just a minute, I'm going to pray for you. If you're joining us through our live chat, you can simply let the host know that you need prayer. If you made a decision for Christ today, you can let the host know. If you're joining us through Facebook or YouTube, then you can simply just drop us a note. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love for you to know that somebody's got your back. Would you bow your heads? Father, thank you for the opportunity that we've had to be in your presence. Lord, we pray that you would you'd speak to every heart. God, as this virus has so many worried, we pray for those that are high risk and those that are the most vulnerable. We pray for our friends and our families and our neighbors that you would help us to be Jesus with skin on. God, let this not be a day that the church shrinks and recoils back. But God, let this be a day that the church of Jesus Christ makes a stand. Father, I thank you for every person who's committed to you this morning. Lord, we're expecting an incredible harvest, not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. Would you say this prayer with me? Say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for trying to do things my way. I ask that you'd forgive me. I ask that you'd save me. I surrender my heart and my life to you. Walk with me the, all the rest of the days of my life. And help me to get plugged in to a Bible-believing church so that I can learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time this morning, I want you to let me know. I want you to let somebody else know you can tell the host. I don't know when the next time we'll gather together in this facility is, but I do know that God is in control, that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear or a spirit of timidity, but he's given us a spirit of power. I know that he's the Prince of Peace. Thank you for joining with us today. We pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you until we get to see each other again. Amen. Lord bless you.